أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا ان حضرنا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من الاسلام لا خم شهاده ان لا اله الا الله وان محمد رسول الله واقامه الصلاه وايتاء الزكاه وحج البيت وصوم رمضان صدق الرسول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعس ان الانسان لا في خس الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم عما بعد indeed we praise and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that out of his mercy he has guided us to this way the way of those who will enjoy the goodness of this world and the goodness of the world to come and to be saved from the torment of the fire we praise and we thank him and we do conform with the testimony ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul and indeed the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have established for us the way the system the procedure the direction so that we can follow establishing the prayers giving the charity making hajj once allah bless us with the means and fasting in the month of ramadan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us privileges and we make dua allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa shaban wa balighna ramadan that we are still alive mashallah we are still with the opportunity and the privilege to get close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so today inshallah my one little point of a reminder is some of the opportunities or what opportunity has been afforded to us so that we get close to allah the thing is do we want to get close to allah because there are times especially when people come and they say brother i have a son i would like to get him married but i don't want a girl who is too strict in practicing the deen or i have a daughter and i want a boy to get married to her but i don't want a boy who is too strict in practicing the deen so based on this evidence i am saying out to you as a reminder that we have to ask ourselves this question do we want to get close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what is the alternative what is the alternative of getting close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not getting close to allah when we look around what is happening in our world today we sometimes wonder where 
is the peace for the good of this life. But respected brothers and sisters, you will be reminded even a few days ago, there was this craze on the internet and throughout the world about bringing harm to Muslims and earning reward for it. And even today, it continues throughout the world. Now there is not one special place where Muslims or people who want to get close to Allah is being targeted. But is this the first time? Is this only happening in our time? Respected brothers and sisters, it is not the first time and it is not only happening in our time. These kinds of what we might call these criminal activities against those who establish La ilaha illallah throughout the ages. The people who stand on La ilaha illallah and for this Ummah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, we will continue to find difficulties. But what do we do about our difficulties? How do we confront our difficulties? You would know that this is also the period in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was considered the period of sorrow for him when he was going through a lot of difficulties in his life. He was losing support of dear loved ones. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was taking back to himself as he pleased. And he was suffering at the hands of the people around him. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took him from Makkah to Jerusalem to the presence of Allah to say to him and to show him his signs. With this in the background, let us look to ourselves. Respected brothers and sisters, we have got to measure as we travel in this life from a year or two ago or five or six or how long we want to look back that what was our condition at that time in Rajab begging for Shaban and Ramadan and ask ourselves how close have I gotten to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what do I have as an asset? I want to give you as a reminder a case and the case of the companion of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and then maybe we'll mention a few others. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on a conviction. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on a conviction about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are sure that there is Allah, la ilaha illallah, and that now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger. And this is the first thing that is offered to anyone who wants to come to Islam. And those of us who have been here for some time, every day we have to re-examine this testimony and ask ourselves, how convinced am I about this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living, and his power, Rabbus samawati wal ard, Allah our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the question, ask us that all, oh, oh mankind, O oh, mankind, what is it that have distracted you from your Lord, the Beneficent? What is it that have seduced you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it that have taken you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it that you are more concerned about than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And these questions, my respected brothers and sisters, are for myself first, are for each and every one of us. Because on the day when we would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
then it will be the situation between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we go to the companion of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his conviction, how convinced he was and what he really believed. That when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back from the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the morning the people of Mecca mockingly asked him, is there anything new, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, yes, last night. Last night I traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem and then I went to the heavens. I went in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back. Now imagine that time in history is not like our time. We have the period of the microchip. We have the period of technology. We have the period of rocket science. Those were the time when the most reasonable or the smartest of person will understand that to travel from Mecca to Jerusalem will take a few months. Some estimated maybe three months. And much less to travel to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's take what humanly we can discuss. And they went to Hazrat Abu Bakr with this news because they were saying to him, did you hear what your friend said? What did he say? He said such and such a thing. Hazrat Abu Bakr confirmed from them that the Messenger of Allah said this. And they said, yes, he did. And what did he say? What did he say at that time? He said, I believed him. He said, I believe him. Respected brothers and sisters, if we ask the question today that the suffering that the Muslims are suffering, it is because of their effort to promote Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the world aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who is in charge of everything and that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came to bring the good news the good news for those who accept this and to bring the warning for those who reject it today we are afraid when we are threatened by people that they will threaten us. Some says, pull off the hijab. Some says, cut out the beard. Some says, change your garment. To do what? So that we will not have to face the difficulties of the threats from the kuffar. When during the time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what was the fear in their hearts? It was like three months journey when they hear about the Muslims, those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah, and do not understand this message, they were fearful, but not so the people of Kalima. So let us ask ourselves in this time and day, do we really believe that we will rise again and become victorious? How will it happen? Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu tell me he stood out at that time. But let us go a little way back. Let us go in the presence, in the presence of Maryam. Maryam, a young woman of her time, a one who was serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then one was given the message that you will bear a son because this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in that society, and it used to be in our society a few years ago, where a young woman would not be seen to be pregnant or having a baby without entering into a decent marriage. It was a thing then that would have been outrageous, one of the biggest crimes. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it remains a crime, but in the eyes of our society, it is normal. Anyway, we go back to Maryam. And she confronted her people based on her conviction about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we go back to Musa alayhi salam. 
when the army was in front of him or behind him and the sea was in front of him and his people were questioning him. And there are so many instances about this matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these people stood out. About Lut alayhi salam, when he was cornered by his people and he, said, he prayed that maybe he could get some help. Respected brothers and sisters, so when we say for the people of this kalima la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, that difficulties had been part of their lives. Ayub alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah and his sufferings. So now we come to a solution. We come to a report that has reached us from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trying to put this in context so that we can benefit from our time and examine our efforts in terms of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This narration is recorded in Bukhari that Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this report comes, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith qudsi or a qudsi hadith, the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I treat my slave based on his expectations from me. I treat my slave based on his expectations from me. Ibrahim alayhi salam was being thrown into the fire and what was his expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We know the story, it's long and time doesn't allow us, but we are all aware of these matters. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, the friend of Allah, the same Allah that we testify that he is our Allah and there is none like unto him, his expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the fire cool for Ibrahim alayhi salam. The expectations of Musa alayhi salam was that Allah would not abandon him at that point of time. The expectations of those who suffered before us was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not abandon them. Because why? Of their closeness to Allah, of their conviction that there is Allah and He has power over all things. And la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We continue to hear this and repeat it. And that Nabi sallallahu alayhi has confirmed that if the world gather to harm you or to benefit you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not intend that for you, they will not be able to benefit you or harm you. And on the opposite side, that if the world want to do anything and Allah to deny you and Allah intended for you, then they will not be able to deny you that thing. This conviction is, seems as though it is escaping us, that we are putting the trust in other things we are putting the trust not like the way the messenger of Allah and his companions and those before us has put their trust in Allah because we are still apparently still very far to have a positive relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as a group when one African slave who had no standing in society understood who Allah was and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Then no amount of torture could have stopped Bilal radiallahu ta'ala from uttering the conviction that Allah is one and the power. And his efforts after that 
that Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him the question that O Bilal, what is it that you do that I heard your footsteps in Jannah? Respected brothers and sisters, we have the same Allah with the same powers, with the same sunnah, his way that he will deal with us. And this narration continues. What's the first part? That I treat my servant. I deal with him based on his expectations from me. And when he remembers me, I am with him. And when he remembers me, I am with him. Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go to Pharaoh and deliver the message. And Musa said, oh Allah, I have committed a crime and I fear for my life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not be afraid, go. Keep me in constant remembrance and I will be with you. How do we understand this matter? If we are not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have the little experience and understanding that we are not yet putting all our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we know everything is from Allah and the thanks that is due is the thing that motivates us to observe our prayers, to give in this charity, to fast in Ramadan, to recite our Quran and to be good and kind and loving. Respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith Qudsi continues. I am with him when he remembers me, and if he remembers me in his heart, I remember him in my heart. And if he remembers me in a gathering, I remember him in a more noble gathering. How many times are we in gatherings and we are too shy or too afraid to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bounties that he has bestowed upon us. There are times, and you experience this, and this is not to put a damp on anything, but this is the reality. How many times we are having a function, for instance, and then they will say to the lecturer or the speaker or the sheikh or whoever will be there to give a talk, don't make it too long can become boring because we want to get to other activities what is the sign that we pick up here we have not yet reached that point when they were men what did the Meccan say about them the companions of the messenger of Allah that in the daytime they were like lions on horses back and in the night they were meek and humble, crying to Allah. So what did we lose over the time? What have we lost? Respected brothers and sisters, the privilege is still there because we are still alive. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situation and condition, not only to sing his praise and glorify his name, which is normal, but when we are confronted with that thing, when we are put to the little test of ignoring or deferring or overlooking what would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something else, then we go the other way rather than standing up to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every little thing in our life has to be re-examined. Every little thing, respected brothers and sisters. Each and every one of us have got to do it so that then when we can grow that three to one, those foremost will be like 20 to 1, but maybe 2 to 1. This is the ability we have over those who do not have Allah. 
and we cannot depend mind you because this is one of the traps that we look to others who have a standing in the society and we think to ourselves it is enough that at least I am like him that's not the standard the standard is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the standard of those before him and his companions and we have got to struggle with ourselves because a day is coming a serious day when there will be no father no mother no brother no sister there will be nobody to help us except our own selves so we continue quickly because our time will be running out and so that part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this narration that has reached us if he remembers me in a gathering I remember him in a more noble gathering and if he comes to me if he make the effort to come to me now to move to me one span one span I move towards him one arm's length and he, he comes to me one arm's length I move towards him two arms length and if he comes to me walking I run towards him basically that's the narration but each statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there has been an example in the life of those before us that we can examine but the bottom line is respected brothers and sisters we have that privilege we have that opportunity we have it in our hands in our heart you know this is the age of the microchip like we just mentioned before it depends on whose feed we are re we are receiving we are either taking our feed from Tom Dick or Mary or Harry or somebody around we know all the big international corporations that feed us through the satellite and give us the programs that we want this microchip they're feeding us and they make sure that we pay for it because we are loyal to them we are loyal customers and they charge us a fee Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a microchip our heart we have to examine it to find out where our programs are coming from and what programs we are occupying ourselves with Ya yuhal insan ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem alladhi khalaqaka fa sawaka fa adala fi ayyi suratin ma sha This verse is from a small chapter in the last part of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking what has seduced us and has taken us away. So I ask myself and I ask you, in this depth, in the secrets of our hearts, let us re-examine what we have, the opportunity we have, and what we wish to do with our time because what is happening in the world will continue to happen and because we are convinced of what the messenger of Allah have said then it will not get better it will only get worse in the world but that does not mean because in closing there are some people who will be foremost on the day of Qiyamah there will be a lot of them from the early times and a few of later times and then they will be the companions of the right hand and the companions of the left hand and so for the details I encourage you to spend some time in Surah Watiya one of the surahs that Prophet Sallallahu have said made his hair grey whatever got grey in his hair and re-examine our situation and then we can ponder and accept and decide that when we are asking Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa shaban wa baligna ramadan that we are really sure, convinced about this matter that then 
we will gain the salvation that Allah has promised. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and you and make it easy for us to understand. We are a people who say Sami ana wa ta'ana ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. We are convinced of this. That to oh Allah we hear and we obey. Please forgive us our weaknesses because we are returning to you. Let us not be distracted from those who want to distract us with what is happening around us. Unless we become strong with one conviction again, then we will not be able to do what is necessary in the struggles to help the weak among the women and children who continue to suffer. Brothers and sisters, let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has given us that opportunity and that privilege that we can be from among those with whom he is pleased. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن الذي ما نفعنا وياكم بالآيات وجد الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم أجمعين من أول الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مضل له ما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد نبده رسول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا لذكرك وشكرك وحسن بارتك اللهم إنا لذكرك وشكرك وحسن بارتك اللهم إنا لذكرك وشكرك وحسن بارتك ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبلنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب اللهم اغفر لي حينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وانسانا اللهم من حيته منا فحي على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان ربنا لا تجلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنحان الفشاء والمنكر والباغي يذكركم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى على وعلى وأز وجل وحمو وتم وأكبر وآخر دعوان إن الحمد لله باكي مصلى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر